Hi, my name is Tim, and in this short video, I'm going to guide you through the proper procedure for diagnosing a faulty flame sensor on a gas furnace. Now, the flame sensor, shown here over on the left, this white wire, uh, is part of the flame rectification process, meaning that a small alternating current signal is sent through this white wire to the flame sensor from the integrated furnace controller, IFC. When the flame envelopes the sensor, this signal passes through the flame and rectifies or changes to DC, hence the term flame rectification. That signal then picks up this green ground wire over here that's bonded to the burners and carries that signal back to the IFC, proving that there's a flame present. Now there's a couple possibilities other than the sensor. You could have a bad ground wire or possibly the IFC could be faulty. So let's take a look at the process for doing this. We're going to start at the thermostat and uh, make sure our thermostat's calling for heat. That's the first thing. So click on the little orange outline. This will turn the selector switch to heat. It'll also turn up the temperature setting. Next, click OK on the procedure guide. Now our next step is to remove the cover of the furnace, which we've already done. So we're going to click OK. Our next step is to tape the door switch in. When we remove the cover, the door switch here down the bottom right is going to open its contacts and break power to the furnace. In order to do any troubleshooting, we're going to need to establish power to the furnace. So click on this orange square and that'll place a piece of tape over the door switch and provide power to the furnace. Click OK on the procedure guide after you've done this. And the next step is to evaluate which loads are running. Well, the first thing that should come on would be the inducer. And we can see from this spinning blue arrow graphic that the inducer is running. So we're going to click yes on the procedure guide. Now our next step is to reboot or restart the system. Once a flame is not proven after three attempts or if a safety switch cycles after three attempts, typically the IFC will lock out operation and also populate an error code on it. So we're going to actually turn the power off and back on here. Just click reboot on the menu. And once we've done that, we're going to need to start looking here. And we can see our igniter is glowing. And do our burners light? Yeah, they light off, but they shut down rather quickly. Meaning typically, if you have a flame sensing problem, the burners are going to light. Uh, they may run for about three to 10 seconds and then they'll shut off. And that indicates a flame proving problem. Now, if the burners are fired for a longer period than that, uh, most likely what's happening there is you're cycling off on a safety switch, such as a high limit or a pressure switch. So do the burners run between 10 and 60 seconds? No, they're only running for a few seconds here. Our next step is to measure the flame rectification signal. And again, this is going to need to be done with the microamp meter in series to the flame sensor. So we're going to click on the wire to disconnect it. Click OK on the procedure guide, and we're going to measure the flame signal. Now, again, we're going to place the leads in series, so we're going to drop them on each of the orange hot spots, and in other words, make the meter part of the circuit. And we'll drop the black lead on the wire that we just disconnected, and we need to wait for the burners to fire to see if there's a signal. And there they go, and we can see we have zero microamps, so there's no signal. We should have a microamp reading of somewhere between 1 and 8 DC microamps. So our answer is no here in the procedure guide. Now. This means that the IFC is not at fault. If we got a good signal here, the IFC is our culprit, but our signal's non-existent. So we've either got a bad sensor or possibly the ground wire could be broken. So in this case here, you're gonna wanna just zoom out a little bit, take a look at the ground wire. You can even measure the resistance of the wire or continuity of the wire to make sure the ground wire is fully bonded and fully intact. Once you've done that, uh, you can replace the sensor Although, again, you may want to check the wire going to the sensor. Um, prior to actually replacing the sensor, you could potentially have a break in the wire leading to it. But in this case here, we're going to click on the sensor and we're going to replace it. And we fix the problem. Again, if you measure the proper microamp reading with the burners fired, but they don't stay lit, well, the IFC is at fault there. If the signal's weak or non-existent, as it was in this case, we've either got a faulty flame sensor or possibly a broken or disconnected ground wire. Now, before leaving the job, make sure you observe one full cycle of operation. 
and also go up to the residence and make sure heat's being received at the residence. And we can see uh, from this graphic from the floor register that we are in fact sending heat to the space now. So it appears everything's working great. If you need to review any of the steps in this process, click on this top left icon and you can see each step that we just took in this process. Good luck on your future service calls and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Do you want to try 3D simulations and VR HVAC training yourself? Then visit interplaylearning.com to start a free trial today.